In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn different concepts of DC circuits, current, electric potential, potential difference, resistance, Ohm's law, and power. In electronics, we come across many terms such as current, voltage, electric potential, resistance, etc. Let's see what their significance is. Every solid body is a structure of molecules and atoms containing equal number of protons and electrons. At ordinary conditions, these bodies are neutral, but if we apply some external energy to it, such as electricity, a mismatch occurs between the number of electrons and protons and the body starts attaining a charge. The current is defined as the flow of free electrons. Thus, as soon as we connect the battery to the bulb, the electrons start to flow and the bulb glows. We refer to this as the body conducting the current. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. The actual flow of current is same as that of the electrons from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery. But prior to the electronic theory, it was assumed that the current flows in the direction opposite to the flow of electrons, that is, from the positive to the negative terminal of battery, and it is termed as the conventional current. Till date, we follow this concept. The unit of current is amperes. Now, in this circuit, external pressure is applied using the battery, which is filled with electrons that are eager to move away from each other. As they are negatively charged, thus, electrons start to flow in the circuit creating an electric potential or voltage which is defined as the capacity of the charged body here battery to do the work to make the electrons flow it is given by electric potential v is equal to work done w per unit of charge q the charge is measured in columns the work is measured in joules and potential in volts Thus, if one joule of work is done for one column of charge, then we get one volt of electric potential. Let's connect the two tanks A and B, which are at different heights and have different water levels. As soon as we open the valve, the water starts to flow from the tank A to tank B till the water level of the two tanks becomes equal. In a similar way, whenever the two charged bodies are connected to each other, the current starts to flow from the higher potential body to the lower potential body till the charge on both the bodies becomes equal. The difference between the two potentials is called as potential difference, sometimes referred to as voltage. The next term is the resistance, which means the opposition to the flow of the current. Let's go back to the water analogy. Change in the size of the pipe changes the intensity of the water flow. Larger the pipe, smaller is the opposition, hence the water flow is more. Whereas, narrower the pipe, water experiences more resistance and the flow reduces. All the devices, including a simple wire, possess the resistance. The unit of resistance is Ohm. Thus a resistance is a quantity proportional to the length of a conductor and the area of cross section and is given by R is equal to rho into L upon A where L is the length of conductor, A is the area of cross section and rho is proportionality constant known as the resistivity of the material. The resistance greatly depends on the temperature too. For pure metal the resistance increases with an increase in the temperature exhibiting a positive temperature coefficient whereas the resistance of insulators or semiconductors decreases with an increase in the temperature leading to a negative temperature coefficient. Consider a temperature resistance graph for a pure metal. At 0 degree Celsius the resistance is R 0 ohms and at any temperature T it is R T ohms. Thus 
the difference between two resistances is proportional to R0 into T. Thus, RT is equal to R0 into 1 plus alpha 0T, whereas alpha 0 is called as a temperature coefficient at 0 degree Celsius and is given as alpha 0 equals RT minus R0 upon R, 0 into T. Let's take an example. A copper coil has resistance of 30 ohms at 0 degree Celsius. Find the resistance of a coil at 60 degree Celsius. Resistance temperature coefficient of copper is 0 0.0045 degree Celsius. So let's see the given data. We have resistance at 0 degree Celsius equal to 30 ohms. Temperature T equals 60 degree Celsius. Alpha 0 equals to 0 0.0045 per degree Celsius. And we need to find resistance of a coil at 60 degree Celsius. We know the formula RT equals R0 into 1 plus alpha 0 into T. Putting the given values, we get resistance at 60 degree Celsius equals 38.1 ohms. George Ohm in 1825 and 1826 discovered the relationship between voltage, current and resistance in a DC circuit, which is now called as Ohm's law. According to his research, at normal conditions, an increase in the applied voltage leads to an increase in the current through the circuit and a decrease in the voltage reduces the current proportionally. Thus, the ratio V upon I always remains constant and is called as resistance. Consider the water tank analogy in which the pressure exerted by the pump is considered as a voltage and the flow of water is considered as a current. If we increase the pressure, the water flow increases and if the pressure is reduced, the water flow reduces. This shows that the flow of water is proportional to the pressure applied. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Ohm's law can be represented in three different forms as V upon I equal to R, V equals to I into R and V upon R equals I. To memorize these expressions, consider the structure shown. Cover R from the diagram and you will get the formula as R equals V upon I. Now, cover V and you get the formula V equals I into R and the same goes with I equals V upon R. When the bulb glows, it converts the electrical energy into light. The capacity of the bulb to perform this energy conversion is called as its power. Thus, electric power is defined as the rate at which the work is done in an electric circuit. That is the rate at which the bulb converts electrical energy into light. The unit of the power is watt. Using Ohm's law, we can write three different expressions for the power as P equals V into I, P equals I square R and P equals V square upon R. Let's summarize this now. In a DC circuit, the flow of free electrons is called as current. We consider only the conventional current that flows from the positive to the negative terminal of a battery. It is measured in amperes. The electric potential is defined as the capacity of the charged body to do the work. Its unit is volt and formula is V equals W upon Q. The difference between the two potentials is called potential difference. Current always flows from higher potential to lower potential. Resistance is defined as the opposition to the flow of current. The formula for which is R is equal to rho into L upon A and is measured in Ohm. This resistance greatly depends on temperature too. George Ohm stated the law that under normal conditions, the ratio V upon I remains constant and is called 
as resistance R represented as R equals V upon I. V equals I into R and I equals V upon R. Electric power is defined as the rate at which the work is done in an electric circuit that is the rate at which the bulb converts electrical energy into light. It is given by the formula P is equal to V into I or I square into R or V square upon R and measured in watts.